Hello, this is part two of the previous video where we reviewed the ILO 3 interface and went through all the settings. As I said in my last video, I was going to launch the remote console and power on the server and let you see the remote console working. And we're going to go through the diagnostic tools and the RAID tools as well. And then we will start uh, diagnostics and go from there. So as discussed here under the virtual media, our boot order is the CD and then the USB. I do not have a CD drive and currently there is a USB thumb drive inserted in the server and I use the HP key maker utility and this allows you to load the service ProLine packs uh, ISO file onto the thumb drive to make it a bootable thumb drive. So once we power that on, we should see the uh, ProLine firmware update utility start. Let's take a look. I'll use the .NET version here. So here you can see the ILO remote console with the .NET and currently it's authenticating. Alright, right now there's no video because it's powered off. Up here at the top here we have our power options. And you can do the momentary press, which is like pressing the button on the server. As it's powered down now, it'll power it up. You can specify virtual drives like a folder, an image file, URL, um, image file on a CD-ROM DVD, and also a URL DVD. Um, these you can, for example, if you want to load Red Hat or Windows without the CD-ROM drive, you can select the virtual drive and select your ISO, and that'll be presented to the uh, server as a uh, virtual media and then starts to uh, launch the installer. So You can also uh, provide keyboard commands like control alt delete, numlock and caps lock and there's a help section. So we'll go ahead and power it on and see if we can get the SPP to start up. And right now it's going to take a few minutes as it's going through uh, health checks and posts and whatnot. So we'll see here on the screen as it comes up. And down on the right there in the screen you can see the power on uh, green button as well. That means the power is applied. Down here you can see the postcodes going on. And now we have display. So 
So as I've said before, it's going to do power and thermal calibration. So there's sensors uh, throughout the chassis and the motherboard, uh, temperature sensors, and detecting power supplies, whatnot. Is your BIOS version? And the first time you install new soft uh, hardware like memory, it goes through and checks all of the memory modules. So it looks like we have a few DIMM slots, they're not detected. It could be a faulty memory module. We'll go on and go into the SPP and we'll run the diagnostics. A post complete and here as I discussed is the automatic firmware update and the interactive so if you don't want to use the utilities like the RAID manager or the diagnostic tools you can just do automatic firmware update and uh, I will pretty much complete the whole entire update for you and walk away come back to it I'm going to choose interactive so we can go into our tools It's actually booting into a custom Linux kernel environment and HPE provided for our tools. Make that a little bigger so we can see it. As a browser listening on localhost 127 and we'll select our language as English and we'll accept the agreement click next so here's our three uh, menus to choose from the firmware update the storage administrator for your raid tools and your diagnostics so I will cover all three of these and we'll start with the insight diagnostics and We'll do some tests on our hardware we just added. So it finished scanning all the hardware and here's what we have currently installed in our system. Um, total memory is currently 122 gigs but we 
should have 188. So you can see these three dims here. It says not installed, but you see there are failed dims, memory, memory modules, or it needs to be reseated. So let's see. And it tells you your product name, serial number, your processors. Um, you can change to different sections. You can show advanced. And can you change the categories, overview, all the way through the system. Let's take a look at the memory as well. Uh, here's the system here, manufacturing information, processor details, second processor, details about the chassis, your BIOS information, Your available storage. This is the uh, PA12 RAID controller, and it's got a one gig um, flashback memory module. And it takes your current RAIDs. So logical drive one has 1.8 terabytes after applying RAID 5, and that's four 600 gig SCSIs hard disk. Goes to reach hard drive. Uh, memory again goes to reach DIMMs, those detailed information, uh, serial number detect, part numbers, modules, DRAM. BIOS information, communication, or USB devices. We'll go through all these, but let's take a look at diagnostics now. So here you can run diagnostics on all devices, power supplies, or logical drives. Um, you can run and test individually, you can do unintended access or interactive uh, number of loops. If you want to test it five times, you can do that. So I'm going to go do all memory and all hard drives as well and run a test there. Uh, so I added five, six, and seven, eight, so we'll test those. And we test total memory. And we'll 
won't test it for three times. It's also a complete test as well. And, uh, right now I'm doing the quicks test. Uh, let's just go ahead and do a complete test now instead. I'll select the new hard drives. Total memory. Three times. I'll go ahead and begin the test and I'll pause it when it comes back and finish the uh, video. As you can see, the status is running. We're waiting on each process to finish here. And we'll come back after it's finished and we'll finish the video.